You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. And we're going to be talking to our sound artist from Arts Transmission, one of three sound artists we've commissioned. And uh, Jane is working with the Golden Gloves Amateur Boxing Club in Blue Town. Uh, Jane, firstly, thank you very much for coming along. It's good to uh, see you here. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for inviting me. I'm very excited to be here. Well, I was wondering, perhaps, if you could just give us a little introduction about yourself, firstly. Um, well, I'm I'm based in Medway. Um, I'm an artist who works in very different forms, but focus very much on sound. And I've been living in, in North Kent for about seven years. I've moved around quite a lot. I haven't taken a straight route to get to where I am. Um, I did run away with the circus about a couple of decades ago and uh, which showed me that there are lots of different ways of doing things and that uh, you just have to be bold and step out there. Well, I was wondering perhaps um, if you could tell us how you develop your soundings and methods and make vocal uh, sound tracks and uh, who with, Joan? Well, I started working with sound um, f- with a, a big focus on sound uh, a few years ago because um, I'd been touring uh, uh, an installation that was made specially for outdoor, for f- outdoors for festivals and spaces where you don't normally put art, um, and it was just they were beautiful. These lovely, um, they were. I used all this pre-cinema moving image technology, so like zoetropes and um, moving mirrors and shadows, and they all had little soundtracks in them, and um, and they were beautiful little worlds that everyone could enter into. But it was a lot of stuff to carry around. And I thought, you know, what do I really, really like? What do I most most value and enjoy about this? And it was the face-to-face contact with the people that came to visit, just, you know, the no- normal public that came to see stuff. Um, and I still wanted to make work outdoors, so I thought, well, the thing that interests me is this making things very directly face-to-face with people. Um, and how can I encourage people to come with me maybe on walks and to listen to the world around them, to heighten their awareness of of all the amazing things that there are that you know we're such a visual culture that uh, I'd like to kind of get people making sounds and thinking about sound a lot more and the kind of the the, the sound that most we probably most think about in 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 the outdoors are, are birds that's the thing we're most close to and I found out in that in field guides like bird guides like the RSPB book or, or whatever that they write it down phonetically, the voice of each different bird that you can find in a place. But I found that they didn't... um, None of the books agree on how to write that down. And that really excited me, because I thought, brilliant, that means you can make it up, you can make it however however you think you sound, it sounds. And that that people could go out and and have a go at this, and we could turn it into a piece of art. Um, So it's a mixture between music, um, uh, creating an experience, almost making a poem, but with sounds, not with words. So that's where it came from. It came from this phonetic writing down of sounds that you hear in the outdoors. So I took people on walks, um, particularly on the Great Lines in Medway. That's where it all started. And there were a bunch of people that spent a summer with me. And we went around listening to all the birds that live there, but we listened to the other sounds around us. And we also paid attention to the shape of the landscape and whether there were trees rustling or grass rustling or insects. And we started to make these sounds. So, for example, a crow would go, um, or a meadow pipit goes, tick, 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 tick. And we found ways of weaving those sounds together. And we also recorded, well, I started making field recordings, and I think you probably talked about that a bit with Jim in your fantastic programme, um, Jim Welton, about field recording and, and record, going out and recording what's there, essentially, you know, the world. And so we would make these, these sounds, these po- sound poems, in the spaces, and then I would record the sounds of the space and layer them together and make soundtracks. And Jane, I was wondering, why did you uh, want to work with the Boxing Club? Well, there were two reasons, really. Um, I was very drawn and impressed by the, the aims of the club. It's, um, it, it aims to have, be very fit and focused um, and be a centre of excellence, but it's also really uh, 
provides kind of friendship and um, a, situ- a, a setting for, for respect between between the trainers, the the the, well, the young the young people and the the older older boxers, and also a way of achieving something. Um, and and I've I've been there probably for a couple of weeks off and on now to some of their training sessions. Uh, it's just so so exciting to to see that pride and um, and happiness and enjoyment in what they're doing. But but also this incredible focus. You know, kids get quite a lot of a bad press at them these days. Um, and when you see that, you you just think, well, why? I don't really understand why because they're they're capable of of a lot. So uh, this sounds uh, an interesting one, and I hope you can um, expand on this. And uh, I think you want to talk about creating a sound sculpture, Jane. Yeah, so that was the kind of the second reason <laughs> for the for wanting to work with the boxing club, uh, because when I thought about what kind of soundscape there would be within the walls of the boxing club, I, I got very excited about the possibilities of those of the sounds that exist it sounds from boxing itself because boxing is all about rhythm um and i've been kind of seeing how how some how they how they train and how they learn to use the rhythm um to to become really good boxers um so there's the sounds for example that i mean there's the the, the most obvious sound is the out breath um the tr- which I don't think I do that quite as well as they do, but um, I'm learning. Um, which apparently there's different out breaths for different kinds of punches. So whether you're doing a quick punch or a longer punch, what the, what the intention is behind that. Um, but there's also the very delicate sounds like a skipping rope. There's there's some guys there that can that do double skipping as if they're just kind of strolling down the street, and the, and the the rope makes this. <laughs> kind of noise so this is where i've moved on from the making the bird sounds to using that kind of uh, way of describing something that you can hear or or um or experience um in in a with, with a vocal sound i'm going croaky now aren't I? I was just thinking that you were sort of talking about um you know sounds and you were making the sounds as you hear them but i wonder if it's quite interesting or whether you find it interesting how you know, we, theoretically, it's the same sound made, but if you ask somebody to make it, they make it in quite a different way, in a way they perceive it. Yes, and that's that's a lot. That's a lot of the reason why I chose to work. I spe- said a bit earlier about why I was excited about um, these field guides not agreeing on how to write down the description of a bird's voice. We all kind of hear things slightly differently, or we experience things slightly different to each other. We can share share an experience we can talk about it to each other but we don't always get um creative input in something so so this way of working with sounds that we make we don't have to find the right word we don't have to be able to play an instrument we don't have to have anything other than ourselves our ears and our voices um so in this way i can work with lots of different people and they can bring their perception of of something to to the work that we're creating together and uh, Jane, I know you want to talk about rhythm and uh, timings next. Well, the um, the training regime um, that happens at the Golden Gloves Boxing Club, Amateur Boxing Club revolves around the the, the timings of of a bout. Um, so apparently, with amateur boxing, um, there are two different timings. There's a, a f- when you're when you're um, when they're having a a fight, <laughs> a, a, you know, a champion, a, 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 what do you call it? Um, they're in the ring, and it's actually, you know, between not just training, they'll the timings will be three minutes per per round, with a minute in between, and then the next round will be three minutes. So there'll be three times three minutes, or there'll be four times two minutes. And I was really interested in this this format, especially to do with sound as well, because a lot of Pop songs are three minutes to four minutes long, so it's a it's a really good um, framework to, to 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 put sound within. So so, it, but also it works perfectly with this training regime. So you have this this um, rhythms going on between the the punching the pads and hitting the bags and the out breaths and all the all the rhythm and movement and the ducking and the the footwork. And so the. Um, so there's this kind of builds up from as the three minutes go go on there's a 
there's a pattern of sound that happens and, and it builds this crescendo the kind of the someone shouts 10 seconds and everyone just really makes that last push to to get to the end of the three minutes and then they all have a minute of breath and stretching and refocusing so i'm hoping to bring all that <laughs> into making my soundtrack so i'm aiming high just as they do so I know you next want to talk a little bit about the uh, richness of, of sound and uh, rhythm. Well, I said a bit before, um, you know, that the the, the 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 environment at the boxing club or in any boxing club, and I mean, depending on what the building's like, it's going to sound different in each place. So it's a bit like a fingerprint. The sounds in there are um, unique to, to to the Minster Golden Gloves and um, to Boxing Club. It's it's their soundscape. So I want to take those those incredible rich sounds that I've mentioned a bit. The the you know the obvious hard hitting sounds, but also the sounds that accompany it. So you've got um, um, a metal gantry that the that the um, bags hang off of that have got chains on them so when they're punched the chains make a sound so you've got these things layering together to create this unique soundscape so we'll hopefully be using some vocal sounds mixed in with some recordings of sounds that actually exist but also um, trying to use other microphones like contact mics I think you probably talked about with Jim as well um, to see if we can get some slightly different sounds um, the contact mic will be placed onto an uh, say a surface or an object and it will record um and perhaps an impact that's made on that object or um a motor sound or something like that no no you just wanted to cover uh, some other um aspects next jane yeah because i've been talking about kind of how i may have made other work and how i'm approaching this piece of work and like you said it, it's it's early days i've probably been um to about five sessions off and on um, and what I've been doing while I'm there is I've been re making recordings of, of of everything that happens just to kind of get um, have a kind of memory of, of of what rhythms there are so so my next step is to start trying to um, count those rhythms almost and I've been making what, uh, sound maps or kind of writing down some of the sounds and and where they where i think they might fit in together and giving and giving them descriptions um and and talking as well because there's got there's in the first session where all the younger younger ones go the parents come along with them as well so there's quite a few people sitting and watching so i've just been having a few conversations with people and just getting a feel for the place and hopefully they're starting to get to know me a little bit as well um so um that continue so was there uh, a website you've got perhaps uh, listeners could have a little look at uh, some of the other projects you've done and examples of your work? Yeah, um, there's a website that's got past projects that I've done on my website, which is www.janepitt, which is J-A-N-E-P-I-T-T dot co dot U-K forward slash proj, P-R-O-J dot H-T-M-L. So you can see some images there um, and short descriptions of projects. Um, and if you wanted to listen to any sounds, uh, things I've made, the flutterances that I was talking about earlier and other soundtracks and soundscapes, you can go to my SoundCloud page, which is on soundcloud.com forward slash J-A-N-E hyphen pit, P-I-T-T. Well, Jane, it's been great to have you along with us this evening. Thank you very much for uh, coming along. We certainly look forward to interviewing you in the future as uh, your part of the project progresses. Really looking forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> That is Jane Pitt right here at the Monday Night Community Show. And, of course, if you can't find that website Jane mentioned, then if you go to the Arts Transmission website, uh, then on her little profile page right at the bottom is a link to that website as well. Of course, the website to find out all about Arts Transmission is www.artstransmissionradioexperiment.wordpress.com. You can find it on my blog and uh, Facebook page where our guests are listed. And if you go to our website, BRF 
fm.net on the articles page there's an article there that covers all about arts transmission and a link to uh, that website is there and of course arts transmission is uh, the project to make new sound art for us here on the airwaves at brfm and uh, we are following the progress at the uh, monday night community show i'm working uh, closely with the uh, artists and the groups and uh, at the end of it we'll have three pieces of uh, sound art at the moment we're covering the progress talking to the artists and the groups all about it